All right, so in this video, we start our, our trust analysis sequence and um, in the first of a few videos that'll cover method of joints, method of sections, how to find a zero force member. But in this case here, we're going to be talking about uh, some of the basic assumptions and determinacies, you know, things that you need to be familiar with as you get started in trust analysis. And, uh, um, and then, you know, no understanding whether or how to check if something is statically determinate or indeterminate. Uh, you know, a trust analysis is, is pretty important if you're an aspiring civil, mechanical, or bioengineer because, you know, later on, so many things can be idealized into a trust system. Uh, because it makes it easier to solve, you know, your human body, uh, space structures, uh, even a reinforced concrete beam, believe it or not, can be you can be analyzed using what is called a truss analogy. But so for now, we'll we'll start with some of the basic assumptions, go through actual truss analysis, and then and and go from there. So here are some assumptions in the truss analysis: is that we assume first and foremost that that all the members are straight okay so there, there are no crooked members um, so what rather there we're going to assume everything is perfectly straight so that when we apply a load to it there won't be these things called second order effects which you have to think about later or p delta effects okay but they're straight um, every member is straight members and they are single force members okay single force members which means that Within the member of a truss, when I look at a truss member, uh, if I if I were to cut it, if I had a truss member and I were to cut it here, two sides of a truss member, let's say here's the hinge, hinge right here. If I look at two sides right here, you know, normally when you cut an element, a structural element, you would have a shear in 2D. You would have a normal force, a shear, and a moment, okay? And what we're saying here in, in, for a truss element that that because of the next two assumptions, all these, the moment and the shear, end up becoming zero. And I could, you can end up checking that based on equilibrium equations and things. But, but essentially, all you have is this normal force and therefore, consequently, a single force member, okay, the axial force. All right. Now, the, the other two assumptions, second assumption, is that the members are connected. Members um, are connected, connected, connected by pins or hinges. So that means at the end of each member, there's a moment release, and that means moments can't be transferred from one member, say here, to another over here, because the pinch here, all these hinges, release the moments, okay? So that there won't be any moment transfer, and consequently, no moment develops inside the, along the length of the member. And thirdly, the loads are applied at joints, at joints, that means I'm not going to have, or if I had like a distributed load or pressure going here to analyze my truss, I'm going to end up taking this and applying it as the equivalent concentrated load to specific joints. Okay. And the reason that I don't want this distributed load here, as you can imagine, is that that means it would, this would become like a simply supported beam. That means I would have a moment and a shear develop right in the middle of this uh, element. And so that's that's another reason why we want the loads applied only at the joints, okay? So that we can keep this single force member assumption to be true. And, and so uh, one one uh, again a popular convention for this as and it's pretty consistent with probably what you've done in mechanics and any other statics course or structural analysis course, is that if my structural element, my truss element in particular, that's connected by hinges, is being pulled on right here. And pulled on this is considered positive and in intention so positive intention if my internal force is is away from my cut okay it's normal to the cut or it's being pulled on this considered tension if my element has here has the the loading or the internal force causes compression compression that is considered negative okay that will be considered negative and that's a that's a pretty typical convention now in the process of analyzing a, uh, a truss, you know, one of the first things you need to do uh, is determine if it's determinate or static, you know, statically determinate or indeterminate. So statically, is it statically, statical, oh gosh, I don't even know if that's a word, statical determinacy, okay, determinacy right here. 
Okay, so how do we check for determinacy? Okay, so so really, you know, determinacy is trying to figure out whether or not the number of equations you have is enough for the number of unknowns, right? And so within a truss, the number of unknowns are my reactions. Okay, so here I have three reactions and the the forces, the single forces within each member. So I have I have I have one, two, three members in this truss here. Okay, so here, so, as, so really it's, it's based on, again, the number of unknowns, number of unknowns versus the number of equations that I have available to me right here. And so the number of unknowns in this case is, is, uh, um, is one unknown per single force per member, okay, so the number of members plus the number of reactions, okay. And I want to know how does it relate to the number of equations I have. And within a truss, because I have hinge connections here and I can't transfer moments, and you really can't calculate a, a moment at a joint anyway. So here I have one, two, th three joints. I have two equations, two equilibrium equations at each joint, two times the number of joints, okay? And at each equilibrium equation, the sum of the forces in like one direction and then perpendicular to it. So horizontal and versus vertical, all right? And you can't, you know, you really can't take moments about a joint when you isolate a joint because, well, shoot, there's no distance to calculate arms and stuff. So anyway, if this is equal, if this is equal, then this is statically determinate. If this, if the number of knowns is greater than the number of, equal, number of equations, then this is statically indeterminate. And if my number of unknowns is less than my number of equations, then I have an unstable system, okay? Unstable structure, unstable. Okay, that's enough. All right, and, and so, okay, so hopefully, just to give you a wrap up here, we, we talked about some of the basic assumptions, okay? Single force members in a truss, we're assuming they're all single force members, no moments, no shears uh, inside. Uh, the members are all connected by frictionless pins or hinges. And then the loads are all going to be applied at the joints. Even the reactions are going to be at joints right here. And then, you know, tension is considered positive and compression is negative, which is consistent. And again, ch check, for, you know, one of the first things that we're going to do is check for determinacy. In the next video, we'll talk about method of joints and do an example problem. Okay, see you in the next video.